Hi crafty friends, it's Caroline and I am back today with a full tutorial on the 6x6 folio that I had made using the Pinkberry Blast collection from Not Too Shabby. And this was an impromptu folio that I made using this giant um, recollections paper that I found at Michael's. And this was a 65 pound paper that measures 24 inches by 12 inches. And I just sort of decided, hey, let's see what I could make with it, you know, kind of coming up with some ideas. And I came up with this little, um, I guess, first attempt at a prototype. And, um, and I love it. I think it's just so stinking cute. I'll have the video linked in the, in the description below. If you haven't already seen that, go check it out. So I wanted to make some modifications to this so that it could uh, be a little bit more accommodating to the many flips and flaps that I wanted to incorporate into it. So I came up with this as my second attempt and I am even more happy with the way it turned out. I increased the spine uh, width and also increased the width of some of the other gussets. And I think it turned out just so stinking cute. All these amazing little places to put pictures and yeah, I, I love it. But this being my second attempt, I still wanna make a couple little modifications to it. I feel like it's still just a tiny bit too chunky for um, by the time I go ahead and put all the photos in here that I want to incorporate, I feel like it's gonna be you know bulging out a little bit too much. So now I'm on to attempt number three. I'm gonna use the exact same layout as this um, second prototype that I made. So if this is something you're interested in, you'll be able to see how I put that together. But I am going to give up a couple of the pages here. So um, what I mean by that is as this opens up, I had one, two, three, four, five, six of these four by six flip outs. And I think I'm just simply gonna reduce it to four. And, and so we're gonna take two of those out to reduce quite a bit of bulk in that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave these the same. I think they turned out just really, really cute. And I love all the tuck spots. I love um, incorporating some of the paper that the pattern paper that I cut out to be able to use that as a, as a tuck spot as well and yeah I'm really happy with the rest of how this turned out but I have decided that I am going to eliminate two of these flip outs um, just so that I've got a little bit of extra room in here when it all comes together um, with all the photos in there. One of the other things that I wanted to point out to you that is in this collection of cardstock that is from that I purchased from Michaels. It has six sheets of each color. I have found that I can cut all of the sheets that I need to make two full folios from each color. So for the craft cardstock that I'm using right here after I cut everything up for this folio, um, including the two extra flaps that I'm going to eliminate for this this one I'm doing for the tutorial today. By the time I cut up all of the pieces, I was simply left with these scraps. And um, I'm sure that I can do something with them. I think they would be perfect for bookmarks. <laughs> and I'm sure that we'll come up with something fun to do with them. But those are all the scraps that I have left from all six of the sheets of the um, 24 inches by 12 inches in each color. So the way I've kind of worked this out, if it's something you're interested in, it looks to me like from this pack of paper, you would effectively be able to get 10 full six by six folios from an entire pack. Now it would be two of each color, but still I think that's a really economical use of paper and I love it when things sort of work out in that way. What I did to begin was I started with my scoreboard and I started with a full sheet of the paper. I don't have any more of the craft colored cardstock to show you uh, because I did make the other folio and this is what I've got remaining. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pick a different color and make the score marks so that you can at least see how that was done. One of the colors that's included in this paper pack is this really pretty kind of creamy white color. It's not really yellow and it's not really an off-white color but it's sort of in between the two. It's just a very soft, beautiful color that I am going to use for my next folio. Uh, and so I want to go ahead and start with that when we make the score marks on it. 
The scoring is very simple. You're simply going to score at five, five and a half, and eleven and a half. And you're going to do that on both sides. We're going to score that at five, five and a half, and eleven and a half on the 24 inch side. We're going to turn it around and score it again at five, five and a half, and eleven and a half. And that is going to give us um, basically a half an inch gusset and a one inch spine when we fold everything up. Now the next step is going to be to cut this in half um, height wise so that we have two that are a six inches tall by 24 inches wide. And the easiest way that I have found to do that is simply to fold on one of the 11 and a half inch score marks making sure that I'm straight on both sides. Go ahead and burnish that. And then I'm gonna take this over to my large paper trimmer and I'm gonna cut that in half at the six inch mark. Now I'm simply gonna place my fold line at the top here um, on my trimmer, slide it over to the six inch mark. Once I get it where I want it to be, I hold down on this plastic guide and that keeps the paper in, in the exact position all the way down. Go ahead and give it a quick cut and I have two pieces that are ready to make for a folio out of that one 24 inch by 12 inch sheet of paper. Now that we have both of our bases cut out of that single piece of paper, I'm going to set these aside because this is a color that I'm going to work on with another project that I'll share with you all in a couple of days. Today we're working with this craft color paper to make the 4th of July themed album. And this is, again, identical to the ones I just cut, scored in the same places, folded, all the same thing. It's just the one remaining piece there. And I'm going to fold and burnish all of my score marks and begin applying the pieces that I have cut for the cover. Now on the cover, I have chosen to do a lot of matting. And the reason being is not just stylistic. Um, it's not just for design purposes, though if you followed me at all, you know that I really love using a lot of matting layers. And that is just one of my preferences design-wise. But it really has to do with more of the fact that this is only a 65 pound cardstock. It doesn't have the structure or the stiffness that I would like to see in, in something that was going to have to, you know, hold as an album per se. In fact, on the original one that I did, if you'll notice, I used a very heavyweight glitter cardstock as well as a heavyweight shimmer cardstock to put on for my matting for my covers and my spine, and that gave me the structure that I was looking for. On this one, I'm using even more layers. <laughs> So I've got a design element that's going to go on the front that I am triple matting behind uh, because it's red, white, and blue, and I really just wanted to carry those through. Honestly, I think you could e easily do with a single or double matting on that. I just really liked the uh, red, white, and blue aspect to it. I will have a full cutting guide available on my website for the measurements I use for these particular matting pieces, but again, feel free to cut them to whatever size you're most comfortable with. The only caveat I would add to that is I do recommend, because this is thinner cardstock, to go ahead and cut that original, the, the first matting layer, or if you just wanted a single you know, layer to cover it, cut it as close to the six by six size as you feel comfortable with. This one here is actually five and 15 sixteenths by five and 15 sixteenths. So I just back that off just a hair off of the six inches by six inches. And reason being is I think it adds a lot of structure to it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this while I glue all of my matting layers down and fold and burnish all of my score marks.
I have gone ahead and put all of my matting pieces for my cover as well as for the gussets and the spine. A couple things that I forgot to mention very quickly before I forget again is that I did attach the ribbon before I attached the matting and the cover for my spine and the ribbon that I used for this particular project came from the Dollar Tree. Three yards of ribbon, $1.25, and I just, I like the kind of rustic quality to this sort of uh, woven red and white in there. I think it looks really nice. And the other thing that I wanted to point out is that on the first one that I made that I only used the two layers for my matting, I used a different glue um, in a couple places. If you noticed, on that one, I used the Beacon 3-in-1 glue, and the reason I did so is because it dries really firm. It dries, uh, I mean, it's 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 basically like a cement. <laughs> it's very hard when it's dried. And if you're only wanting to use maybe one or two layers of matting, I would suggest using this type of a glue. I think in the UK it's called Kalel uh, glue. I'm not, don't, don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure, but, but you folks out there in the UK, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But this type of glue is not a water-based glue. And as such, it doesn't tend to warp paper. And it also, like I said, it dries really hard. So I think that's a great glue to use. When I'm using this many layers, I'm not worried about any warping. There's so much on there. It's There's so much surface area that's just gonna adhere that it's stiff and firm. And I, I'm very happy with the way this has turned out. This spine in particular is very firm. And so I think it's working out really well. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to attach all of my fold out pieces to the album. For the inside pieces, you're going to need four that measure four and a half by five and seven eighths, and you're going to score it at half an inch on the four and a half inch side. And you're going to need two pieces that are five and a half by five and seven eighths, and you are going to score that at a half an inch on the five and a half inch side. And you're going to need two pieces that are five and seven eighths by six and you're gonna score that at a half an inch on the six inch side. Those are for the two sections that are in the six by six inch squares. For the side fold out pieces, you're going to need eight pieces that are four and a half by six, and they are gonna be scored at one half an inch on the four and a half inch side. So I'm gonna quickly go through and score, fold, and burnish all of those pieces, and I'll be right back. I have gone ahead and scored, folded, and burnished all of my score marks, and then I used my quarter inch corner chomper to cut a quarter inch round um, on each of the corners that were opposite of the fold on all of the pieces. I am now gonna glue these together in pairs of two, so I should have four sets that are four and a half by six that are glued together. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm going to apply glue on the flap here that I created with the score in the fold, and I'm gonna glue it directly down on top of the other piece so that they line up perfectly. That's gonna give me two pieces that are attached with a single flap behind them. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to attach the two pieces that measure six by five and that originally measured six by five and seven eighths. I scored and created a half inch flap on the backs of them. And then I have two pieces that measure five and a half by five and seven eighths. On these, I'm gonna glue them together in pairs where I have one that is the five and a half by five and seven eighths and one that is the six by five and seven eighths. And I'm gonna glue them together up at the fold line and I'm gonna have those together in pairs and they're gonna be like this. And then I'm gonna take the remaining pieces and that is four of them that measure four and a half by five and seven eighths and I'm gonna glue them together in pairs of two, much the same as I had done the other ones that were four and a half by six originally. And then we'll meet up once I've gotten those completed.
glued these together in their groupings of two and I have the two pieces that are five and a half by five and seven eighths inches glued to the two pieces that are um, six by five and seven eighths. I've got the four pieces that are four and a half by five and seven eighths glued into groupings of two. And so they, you know, just sort of come together almost like a little booklet like this with the hinge on the back. And then I've got the eight pieces that measured four and a half by six also glued together in groupings of two. And how this is going to come together is the ones that measure five and seven eighths inches wide, they go in the center here on these six by six inch um, sections. And the five and seven eighths, that, that, that shorter eighth of an inch on the width is just simply gonna allow for the paper to fold without it catching in those fold marks. So it needed to be slightly narrower than the six inches in width and they're gonna get glued to the top here. And the two pieces that are four and a half by five and seven eighths um, that have been, been glued together in groupings of two, the four pieces that have been glued together in groupings of two, they are gonna be glued on the bottoms here inside of those six by six inch sections as well. And what that is going to do is it's going to create a series of flaps that are gonna go up and down and up and down for our album. And so let's go ahead and get those glued into place as well as the ones on the sides here. So I'm gonna set these aside here for a second. And the ones on the side flaps are simply going to be glued on either side of the section that measures five inches by six inches on both of the fold out pieces just past the gusset. And those are going to give us the fold outs that go like this. Now this one I did six of them rather than four. So on this one I had two groupings of three but I did decide to reduce that simply to try to reduce some bulk. So on the one that I'm making here for this tutorial, um, I've only got the uh, two groupings of two on either side. So I'm gonna glue all those in place and I will be right back. gone ahead and attached all of our inside flaps and they are working just fine as they are meant to and I've got the side flaps here doing the same thing and I'm really happy with the way they all lined up. The next step is going to be for us to attach our magnets for the closures and that is very simple. Now I started off using some magnets that were the basic gray magnets and those are fantastic magnets when I when I started paper crafting that was all I knew that it had existed and they really are fantastic magnets but you guys I have completely switched over to these magnets that are available on Amazon they come in bundles of 50 75 or 100 and they are so inexpensive. I'm gonna have a link in the description below. If you're open to trying some new things, check them out. I was so happy with the way they work. I'm happy with the way they continue to work and I'm probably not gonna use anything but them going forward, you know, unless I find something else and I'll share that with you if I do. The three sizes that I consistently use and purchase regularly are 10 millimeter by one millimeter, 12 millimeter by one millimeter, and 12 millimeter by two millimeter. 
and the placement of them depends on what I need to carry as far as a load for hold. Now on the 10 millimeter by two millimeter magnets, I really like to use these when I do my pop-up elements and I'll have a link in the description below of kind of the twist and pop that I like to do in my albums. And the reason being is, is that those pop-up elements have to house a lot of folded papers and I like the two millimeter thickness on them because it seems to come, you know, a little bit, uh, compensate a little bit for the thickness of the paper so that the magnets have a better chance of actually catching with each other. The 12 millimeter by one millimeter magnets are typically what I reach for for a page of this size that's kind of a wider page and the 10 millimeter by one millimeter ones those are the ones i use for kind of the smaller little flap closures and things like that but honestly you guys you can just use them however you want in this case here i am going to be using the two millimeter by 12 millimeter magnet on the edge here for what this catches and the reason being that I know I'm going to have a lot of layers that are going to end up filling up inside of here and I want this to stand up a little bit taller a little bit higher of a reveal than the pages that I have right now because I know as I start adding things it's going to become thicker and I think it's going to catch easier there. On these, I'm simply gonna use the 12 millimeter by one millimeter magnets because all it's gotta do is catch this inner one. I like the extra width on that with the 12 as opposed to 10 millimeters. So I'm probably not gonna use these at all in this particular um, folio. Now, I'm going to need two of each anywhere I want a closure. And as far as having a positive or a negative, um, I know that on the basic gray, they have ones marked positive and ones marked negative. Listen, these are magnets. They're gonna find their own positive and negative. And so I'm just gonna let them do that um, as they need to. But let's go ahead and attach our magnets here. Now I do this with double-sided tape and you can use score tape, you can use, this is just some tape that I buy from Amazon. It's also very inexpensive and I'll link that in the description below as well. And I simply take a piece of the double-sided tape. In this case, I'm going to place it, kind of center it here on this flap about a half an inch in from the edge. And um, then I'm just gonna put some tape over the top of it. And the reason I'm kind of going over this is I've gotten a lot of questions about what magnets you use, how do you attach them, and so I thought I'd take a little more time on this one. You see how all I've done is just let this magnet go and it's gonna find where it wants to be. Once it finds where it wants to be, I'm gonna take another piece of double-sided tape, but this time I'm gonna put the sticky side up and let it sort of find itself there. So now I've got a sticky surface on the sides here with the magnet where it kind of needs to be. I'm simply gonna pull this piece down, press on the sides there so that that tape will catch and I have now installed the magnets that I need for my closure on this, and it just is that simple. So let's go ahead and we'll put the magnets on here as well. Um, for these over here, I am going to kind of center the placement of this wider magnet, and I'm not gonna put the other magnet on yet because it's gonna get encased in, um, you know, another piece, like a design element here. My magnet just grabbed a hold here. <laughs> so all I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna tape it down where it needs to be so that I don't forget as I'm applying paper, as I'm applying my decorative paper. Um, but I'm not, I'm gonna just come about a 16th of an inch away from the edge of where this, this uh, fold falls down. And I'm just gonna tape it down right there. And that's gonna remind me to make sure I put a magnet on my other piece so that it catches, and also I've got it in place. Let's go ahead and put the magnets on these as well. Once again, I'm simply going to center it. I would like to use the grid on my, um, on my cutting mat. I'm coming down about a half an inch. It's not, I'm not measuring this, you know, I'm not getting out exact tools, I'm kind of eyeballing this. Now let it find its little attachment here. I'm gonna take another piece of tape, put it sticky side up, bring it down, press it, and then I do like to just take my um, bone folder and just sort of 
press around that. I'm really encasing that tape around it. Those are done. And then for over here, I'm gonna use the other one. Now, the way I like to fold these in is I want the outside flap to be sort of encasing everything. So I'm gonna go in, out, in, out, as far as like inner or outer flaps. And this piece again is gonna be placed about a 16th of an inch away from the edge of that flap that's coming down because as you add paper it kind of lifts it up and I want this to be a little bit um, I would like the profile to be a little bit higher than just the one millimeter so that's why I've chosen to use the 12 by 2 millimeter magnet in that application these other two magnets are what are going to attach the other flap in place and I like to simply put those on the magnets are going to hold them where they need to be and that helps to remind me that I need to encase those magnets on the decorative element so that I actually have some closure on those so those are the magnets on the inside and um, there is something else I like to add and this part is optional but as you can see these pages they, they can kind of like lean in so that this edge is not squared off there if I simply at, attach a small magnet here and a small magnet here on the inside, when those pages are closed, that's gonna help give me a squared off edge on both ends. So it's gonna prevent this from leaning in like that. And how we do that is um, we simply take a magnet placement, um, you know, either here or here somewhere just to keep this depth in place. And so I'm gonna attach a magnet on this piece and this piece. Again, this is completely optional. And I know I said I wasn't gonna use the 10 by ones, but I think they're really perfect for this. I just need it to sort of find itself. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm simply going to attach a magnet about a half an inch from the top and a half an inch from the side on the outer flap piece here. So the, the, this piece here. And then that way when it closes up, I need another magnet for it to, to grab onto here. And how I'm gonna find the placement for that is I'm gonna allow the magnet to find itself and uh, just sort of write itself here um, on the one I've already attached with the tape. But on this one, I'm gonna attach some glue. And the reason being, it's hard for me to kind of reach my hand in with the tape and make sure it gets in the right spot. And so in order to get my placement correct on here, I'm gonna allow the glue to grab itself where it needs to be um, by kind of just making sure that I've got it at just the right depth here. And I'm simply gonna have it hold in place for a few seconds until that glue holds. And then once I open it up, then I will attach it with the tape. And then we're gonna do the other side in the same way. So now all of our magnets are in place and I really like the, the way it keeps it from going too far in or too far out. I really, I can't push it that way even if I tried at this point. And it really just helps to keep my folio very squared up and I, I just like that. I, I think it's very neat and tidy. So now we get to move on to the fun parts of adding all of our decorative paper. We've essentially got the you know construction of our album is complete and it is time for us to go ahead and start playing around with the fun paper choices. Let's go ahead and begin with these sections here in the middle, these in the six by six sections, because those are the largest pieces. And I always like to start with the papers in the um, largest sections first, so I can then utilize the scraps for the subsequent smaller sections. I'm gonna cut my pattern papers in accordance to the measurements that are gonna be available on the cutting guide and um, go ahead and start gluing those into place and I'll be right back. So I've cut the pattern paper and these two pieces that are gonna go on the insides of, these, uh, of the flap pieces here, those are gonna be cut to four and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. I did go ahead and ink my edges, and because I'm using craft cardstock, I'm using a honey mustard ink uh, by Gina K Designs. I just think that it helps sort of um, 
blend in with that craft paper on the base. You can use whatever color you feel works best with the papers that you're using, or you can just omit this altogether. It's not such a big deal when I'm dealing with prints like this that are mostly a white base or a, you know, a, a color that seems like that's what goes through. But when I'm dealing with darker color paper that's not a solid core paper, that white edge can really be jarring sometimes. And so that's why I just like to go ahead and ink my edges. It sort of helps, in my opinion, with some continuity. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue these down. I've gone ahead and glued those papers down, and now we're gonna start working on the inside portions here. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna put my papers that are going to cover the inside spine and the gussets, and I am gonna go ahead and ink these edges and glue them down as well. And once those are all glued down, now it's time to go ahead and start working on our flaps here. What I like to do is begin with the inside base first. And for that I've cut two pieces of cardstock here that measure five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. I'm going to go ahead and ink the edges and glue them down. Once those are attached I'm simply going to start moving from the um, kind of like from the inside out. So the next pieces that I'm going to attach here are going to be these bottom pieces. And I've decided to put a pocket element on them. So, and this is optional, you don't have to do that. Basically for all of the matting for these bottom pieces, they're gonna be cut to five and three quarters by three and seven eighths. And so what I've chosen to do, and this will be in the cutting guide, is I've chosen to cut two pieces of five and three quarters by three and seven eighths out of a solid cardstock. Then I've got some leftover pieces here from when I was cutting out this star paper, and I simply cut them to two inches by five and three quarters. And I did use, I, I like to use my envelope punch board, my We Are Memory Keepers envelope punch board to create a notch whenever I do a pocket. So I simply lined this up at the two and seven eighths inch mark and punched it. And that way I have a little notch in the center of those pieces. So I'm gonna ink my edges on these pocket pieces here. And one of the things that I like to do is kind of get inside of this little notch that I've cut just with the edge of my ink pad and then I just go ahead and run my ink all the way around the edges. Once that's done I'll go ahead and glue this little um, pocket down on three sides and attach it to the solid colored cardstock here lining up my edges as I do it. And then I'm gonna glue the whole thing down on top of the flap here. And then once I've got that in place, I'm simply gonna repeat the process for the other one. I'll be right back. Those have been glued down in place and they are just a little kind of tuck spot pocket here. And then for these two pieces up here, I've cut two pieces that are five and three quarters by five and three eighths. They are going to be attached here just like that but I did decide that since they flip up and I might wanna tuck something up in there like a photo underneath, I did decide to go ahead and glue this little strip on here. I had um, a strip left over that was just wide enough to reveal these banners on the printed paper, on the pattern paper. And so I am gonna attach that up here just like that. So now I've got these glued down as well. And what that gives me is it just gives me an option if I want to tuck a photo up underneath there or put a tag under there. It, I don't have to, but I can. And I, I like having the option of that. And I do like having these little pockets down here. So now these are gonna fold up and let's put some pattern paper on this section as well. And for these sections here, I'm using some of my scraps. 
in the process of cutting off one of the banner pieces so that I could use it for the next step that I'll show you here in just a minute, I was left with these pieces that were only three and a quarter inches tall. And um, it was a, a piece that was three and a quarter inches tall by 12 inches wide. And I decided to turn that into a design element for this page. If you've seen my other videos, you've probably seen me use these Love From Lizzie peel-offs. And I just, I'm in love with these. These are really amazing. They add so much to my projects and I, and I just really do love them. So I thought that this was a great place for me to begin introducing those into this project. These pieces aren't large enough to cover the um, entire section that I need them to, but it's kind of nice that it nestles up against this, this half inch lip here that is from the attachment of the four by six piece that is above it. And by using this to just kind of butt up next to that, then I don't have any ridges or anything. It's kind of a flush way for me to get a decorative element here. And then I'm gonna use those peel offs on the edges just to give it a little bit of an extra pop, a little bit of extra something um, on this as a design element. So once I've glued those into place, I'm simply gonna take some of these peel offs here and I am going to run them along the edge of that pattern paper to turn what would have been perhaps an awkward seam into a really interesting design element. And I simply run it right along the very edge of that, give it a little pressing. And once it's in place, I will either take scissors or I really like to use my finger blade or an X-Acto and just lay right up next to it and give it a little press down as I pull back and it will uh, cut it off just in very clean, uh, clean line there. And really all I need to do is give it a little burnishing and it is good to go. As you can see, once those are put into place, it just adds a really nice little extra something, you know, to that. And so I'm going to continue to go on through this. On this next page here, that um, is the back side of this flap, I've chosen to do a cutout of the banner pieces that are on the printed pattern paper. And sometimes you'll have banners that are printed like this, sometimes they'll come in a sticker or you may even just want to attach some sort of a piece of paper or something like that in the corner. This can also simply be achieved with a cut apart that you have maybe put up in the corner and glued on two, on two sides as a tuck spot. It's not necessary, but it was something I felt would be a nice design element and I certainly wanted to do. So I'm gonna cut out, I'm gonna fussy cut around two of the banner pieces and then I'm gonna glue them onto a piece of solid colored cardstock and have those ready to be attached to, um, to these pages here. The pages themselves are gonna be covered with a white cardstock um, just to give, number one, give your eye a little bit of a design break. It's much more subtle to only have these banner pieces running across there and have some white. It lets your eye to kind of have a rest amidst all of these pattern papers. Um, but I also just really like the way it looks. It helps everything sort of pop. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue those down, fussy cut out two of the banner pieces, attach them to some solid colored cardstock backing, and then I will show you how I glue them down. All right, I've gone ahead and cut these out backed them onto some solid colored cardstock, cut that out again as well. And I'm simply gonna kind of dry fit and see where I wanna make my cuts. So I hold it up here and I'm gonna draw a line right parallel with the white paper that's underneath. I've gone ahead and glued those pages down as well. And then that just tells me kind of the angle that I need to cut on my um, banners here. I'm gonna dry fit it again, just sort of hold it up and it looks really good. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply some glue here on the edges of each of them. And I am gonna come down on part of one of the banners just to give it a little bit more stability. And then I'm gonna find my angles again. 
as far as my placement goes. And once I have it where I want it, I'm just gonna kind of press it down there where that glue was. I am gonna give it a little bit of a, kind of a firm pressing. There we go. Lift off any extra glue that may seep out the sides. And that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach the other one in the same way and I'll be right back. And now I've just cut two pieces of solid color cardstock that are four and three quarters by four and three quarters square. I went ahead and rounded the edges on them and they're gonna make for great photo mats. Um, they are optional. You can also just simply slide a photo underneath those places, but I just think it's a nice little finished look. So I'm gonna keep those in place. And now we're gonna move on to placing some pattern paper on this remaining bottom flap. And I've just chosen to do the blue um, gingham on the bottom here and the stars on the top. I'm gonna round the corners, ink the edges and glue those down. And then do the same thing with these top flaps. These pieces measure three and three quarters by three and seven eighths. And again, I'm gonna round the corners on those. I've gone ahead and cut some pieces for the top flaps and they measure four and seven eighths by five and three quarters. I've chosen to do the stars on the inside and these rosette buntings then on the outsides. I'm gonna round the corners, ink the edges, glue them down, and I'll be right back. I've now covered all of my interior flaps on the six inch sections, the six by six sections with pattern paper and even was able to get some decorating done here. I am gonna go ahead and insert some tags in some of these sections, but I'm gonna wait till the end to see what I have remaining and hopefully just use some scraps for that. But I do love the way these Love From Lizzie peel-offs are really helping to make this pop. And so what I would like to do is I'd like to go over some of these with them as well. The sway design of this particular one here makes it so easy to go around corners or edges or you know any sort of angles that you have because of that kind of sway on one side. And so I'm simply gonna lay it down on here and kind of ease it around in the shape that I need it to go in as I'm sort of guiding it along and I'm just covering up that uh, red kind of stitched, looks like a rope element that's along there already. And um, I do like the way this ends up looking. I think it gives it a really nice finish and just a little bit of sparkle. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put that on both of these. I think I've got enough to do both of them with one, maybe, we'll see. Yeah, for sure. Okay. I'll just cut off my little ends here. I'm not gonna save this piece. It's a little too small to be saving, but those other pieces I definitely do save. Get that pressed down. And I do like the way that looks. I think it's just a really nice finish. And so, um, got glue on my fingers here. <laughs> So we've got these taken care of and, and when you um, open them up, we've got the inside. Again, I am gonna cut some tags and some matting pieces to tuck in here and up here, and we'll do those towards the end of the project. But so far, these center sections are completed. And now we can focus our atten attention here on these side sections. I did reduce these down to only two flaps per side. So we've got four on this um, section here and four on that section. So two, two flaps per side of each section. And let's go ahead and get started with some pattern paper on these. I'm gonna cut my pieces and I'll be right back. So I've gone ahead and cut the pieces for the inside flap, the decorative pieces that cover the inside flaps. And the uh, base piece here measures uh, four and seven eighths by five and seven eighths, and that slips right into this little section here that has turned out to be a five by six inch section. And then on the inside there, I've chosen to use the stack pocket die and the matting pieces because I just think they're super cute. Now, this is a set that I purchased on Amazon and I will have a link in the description notes below. I really like this set a lot. And one of the things that I've chosen to do with it is to use the matting die 
to effectively create the detail for my tags. And so running it through my die cutting machine, not to cut the matting piece, but simply aligning it at the top of my tag that I've, you know, the piece that I cut for my tag and running that through gives me a kind of a fun little interesting shape. And I like that the, the circle is, is sort of completed, you know, with the, the same shape that comes out of the matting piece. And I just think that it offers a really nice design element. And so I've chosen to do that as well. Now, I will say that since I modified this one to accommodate for a larger spine from my earlier one, it's kind of a tight fit here between these. I think, <laughs> you know, one of the things you could do is you could reduce a little bit of this spine. What I've chosen to do to address this is that once I've got it all kind of glued together and in place is I'm simply turning it over and running my bone folder along the edge to almost fold that edge back in just a little bit. It's not a lot, it's probably only about a sixteenth of an inch, but it is enough to give it a little bit of extra room uh, to accommodate for those folds that are gonna be coming in. I've also prepared my pattern paper pieces and cut them to three and seven eighths by five and seven eighths, and that is for these four by six flaps that are folding over. I've also gone ahead and fussy cut out the design elements that I want to use for my closures. On one of the pattern papers, there was a really pretty bunting style rosette print, and I simply picked out two of them that I wanted to use and fussy cut those, and they're gonna serve as our closure here. I then backed it with a two inch white circle and I'm going to attach my magnet onto this piece and then back it again with a piece of blue cardstock so that it gives it a little bit of a pop against that white and also allows me to encase the corresponding magnet for this closure that I'm gonna be creating here. Before I get started attaching all of the pattern paper, I want to run through very quickly how I install eyelets or grommets on my pieces of pattern paper, cardstock, chipboard, what have you. When installing my grommets, what I choose to do is I choose to use the traditional punch method um, with, the, with the tools that come with different grommet sizes. For this project, I'm actually gonna use two different sizes of grommets or eyelets. I'm not really sure what the difference is in the terms. I've used both interchangeably, and if you have any um, information on that, please share it in the comments below because I would love to know but I've always sort of thought of eyelets as being smaller and grommets as being larger. I don't know if that's true or not. But for the tags, the large tags that I am making here, which are four by six tags, I'm gonna use the larger grommets. What I like to do is take a cutting mat. Now this is just an inexpensive cutting mat that I purchased from the Dollar Tree. And I like to designate that as my sort of hole punk punch or puncture cutting mat and that way I'm not messing up my everyday cutting mat. I don't know if that makes sense but that's what I like to do. I simply take my tag and I'm going to center it on here and I'm going to take the hole punch tool that comes with the kit and I'm gonna just eyeball it where I want it to go. Now there is a little uh, hole in the middle of here where you could make a mark and sort of visualize that, and I do that sometimes, but on this one I'm simply gonna try to kind of eyeball it where I want it to go. Grab my hammer and give it a couple little taps. Once I've cut that through, the paper tends to sort of stay in the cutting tool, and that's fine. I'll show you how we're going to get those out. Let's go ahead and do the second one very quickly while we've got it in place. And once I've cut those holes, I simply take this little pokey tool that I also purchased from the Dollar Tree and go inside of the um, opening and sort of press those cutouts, those little circle cutouts out of that opening. Now to attach the grommets themselves, we're gonna use a washer piece, and I will have the links for these particular kits that I purchased in the description below. I believe both of them were from Amazon, and I also believe these other uh, smaller colored eyelets were also from Amazon. I'll try to have those linked in the description below. 
You can take these out of the bags and put them in the corresponding little containers that come with it, but they are so thin, I find that they, tr they, they kind of slide underneath those dividers. So I tend to just keep them in the plastic bags. And so for these tags, I'm gonna need two of the washers and two of the grommets. Included in the kit comes the base that you're gonna use to attach the grommets to the paper. I simply slide the colored piece through, or your decorative piece through, slip it over the base, and then on the washer there is one side that is concave and one side that is convex. You're gonna put the concave side up, meaning the sort of rounded side up, and place it right over the top of that. Then you have the, the first tool that I used, which was the cutting tool. This is the grommet setting tool. And so it doesn't have a, a, a way to cut a hole. There is a raised ridge on the interior of the circle and kind of a grooved um, convex ridge on the outer part of the circle. And that simply slips right over the top of the base that is in, in place here that the tool that comes with it. And once it's in place, you simply take your hammer and give it a couple taps. And once that's done, your grommet is fixed. It's perfectly smooth. It's perfectly set. And I love the finished look of it. I'm gonna go ahead and apply my grommets and I'll be right back. The tools for the eyelet setting are a little bit different, and I'm gonna show you how they differ. The hole punch is pretty much identical, simply just a smaller diameter of the hole punch. The setting tool is pretty much identical in that there is a convex and a concave portion to kind of press down on those metal pieces. But the tool to set it on, at least in this kit, doesn't have the pin that sticks up. Instead, it has a groove in which the eyelet front will sort of nestle into, and I'll show you how that's used here in just a moment. Now, I'm gonna use the eyelets on these smaller pieces that I have, and I'm just gonna do the exact same thing that I did. These are sort of a bookmark shape tag, and I'm simply gonna find my center, place my hole setting tool over the front of it and give it a few taps. Once I have my hole in place, I'm then going to attach the decorative part of my grommet onto you know whatever side I want to be the front. I'm gonna use this setting tool, the base of the setting tool, and sort of slide it over to where I've got that in the ridge. If you can see, you can also place it on there first, and it's simply gonna stay there, and then I'll, I'll put my, my paper over the top of that. The washer is attached in the, exactly the same way where you want the, the rounded side or the concave side over the top facing up. And then the setting tool simply goes over the top, you take your hammer, give it a few taps, and then that's it. I've got my grommet set on this one, which again, I'm calling the grommet the larger one. I don't know that there's a difference in the terms, and the eyelet on this other one. I'm gonna place some ribbon between those holes just you know, for decorative purposes and to give it a little bit of zhuzh, and then we'll get all those set into place. I'm gonna fast forward through as I apply the rest of my pattern paper, and so you can see how I put those onto position. It's been a long, hard season. I'm feeling weary to my bones I guess that's my reason I've packed my bags and now I'm gone Somewhere Between the sun and the deep blue sea
All right, folks, that completes our tutorial for this adorable six by six folio that was made out of those giant pieces of paper I purchased from Michaels. They measured 24 inches by 12 inches. I was able to make two nearly identical folios out of the sheets of paper that I had included in that pack I purchased from Michaels. Now, I will say that when I say nearly identical, and I think you can see the difference, this one is a little chunkier. It's sort of bulging at the seams more. This one is ready to house those photos without having to take on so much bulk. And the only difference between the two is, is I changed from three flaps on each side of the outer foldouts to two. And that really did make a difference in the bulk because you have to consider it's not just those flaps, it's then the additional two pieces of paper that go on those flaps, any embellishments or pockets that I added to those flaps, and you can kind of see how that continues to grow. So on the one, the tutorial that we've done for today, this is the third version of this six by six folio that I've made and I'm really happy with it. I think I've settled into my, my sweet spot, so to speak. Let's go ahead and open it up and do a final walkthrough. I have a tie closure. It opens up, there are some magnets in place to sort of hold it together so that when it's closed up, it finds itself in, in the position that it needs to be in. When you open it up, you have these beautiful star papers here. You could put some photos on here or you could just let it stay just like that because the real excitement of this folio lies inside. We've got these that fold up and down, created a bit of a tuck spot here with the bunting paper that I cut out to create a, a really a, a working bunting of sorts in here. <laughs> Then these fold back up. We've got a couple other tuck spots here that can either be utilized with these photo mats that I created or simply slip your photo up underneath there so you've got a top edge border on it. This piece here was simply a scrap cutoff piece that I had from the 12 by 12 sheet for cutting these other pieces as well as some design elements out of that bunting print. And in order to sort of make it fit in that space, I simply butted it up against the edge of the half inch attachment here and used some of those amazing Love From Lizzie peel offs. They really make everything pop, don't they? These fold down and then we've got some little pockets here again with the cutoffs and the scraps from the papers that I've already used. And then these just fold up and down and up and down and are secured with a magnet closure that I'm just very happy with. On each side, I'm gonna open this up this way so we've got a little more room. We've got a magnet closure here on this uh, piece of the bunting print that I fussy cut out, backed on a two inch white circle as well as some blue cardstock. This opens up like that, like this, like that, like this, and reveals this nice little stacked pocket inside, which I use the stacked pocket die I'll have listed in the description below. I showed you how I attached my grommets and my eyelets, and I'm very happy with the way these all turned out. This closes up like this. I created a couple tuck spots here because I kind of wanted to highlight that craft paper. I feel like it works really well with this collection and I def didn't necessarily want to cover that, but I did want a design element there. So I used some pieces from the sticker collection, backed them with some solid colored cardstock, only glued them down on two of the sides so that I could create some tuck spots there. And then these just simply close back up like this and we've got that magnet closure, identical side over here, or I guess mirror side over here, where this then opens up again. I've got two others of the sticker, uh, pieces from the sticker collection backed on cardstock, again, glued in such a way that photos or photo mats can simply slip in there. Open this up, we've got a couple other little design elements here, our tags, and I am just super happy with the way this turned out. 
there are some holidays and some themes that I just don't know that I want to make an entire huge album for. Some of those events that you want to have a dedicated place to put some photos into don't necessarily warrant a huge photo album. I really think that these sweet little folios are the perfect solution when you've got times like that. The collection that I used for these folios is the America Collection by Lori Whitlock. This was an Echo Park paper collection that came out in 2020 and I had two of these collections in my stash. So I do have quite a bit left over. I've started holding myself accountable to completing an entire paper collection once I sort of open it, and I'm really happy with the results. The first one that I tried that on was the Pinkberry Blast collection that I had purchased from Not Too Shabby, and I was so happy with all of the things I was able to make with that collection and not be sort of burdened with all of the extras and the scraps that I had left over. I love using scraps, I love using mix and matches of patterns, but sometimes they get to be a little bit, I don't know, it feels almost stressful having them in my stash. So I am going to continue working with this collection on my next project, and I think what I'm going to do is actually make some cards with that. One of the things that I like to do with these collections is utilize the branding strips. Those are the strips that come at the bottom of the papers of the collections when you purchase them. On the back of this folio, I layered up one of those branding strips, a little piece of ribbon, and some cardstock, and created this nice little element that I'm very happy with, and I think that that's something that I may carry on into future folios and albums as I go forward. And it's a good way to remind me which collection I used in that project. I hope you found this helpful. I hope that you are enjoying your summer festivities, you know, whether you're here in the United States and we're getting ready to celebrate our Independence Day celebration, or you're simply just having some summer picnics. Maybe you've got a celebration where you live that's special for you. I'd love to hear about it and what your traditions are, the things that you like to do. Summertime festivities for us just tend to include some sort of food and family and fun. One of my favorite summer memories from when I was a child was my grandmother making something called roll cakes. My grandparents had a very large garden and they grew their own watermelons and we would have those watermelons cut up ice cold and they would be served with these hot roll cakes, which were simply some dough that was fried and puffed up and sprinkled with ample amounts of salt. The combination of that warm, chewy, salty bread with that ice cold, juicy watermelon. Oh my goodness, that is just something that summer dreams are made of for me. I'd love to hear what your favorite memories or traditions are for summer gatherings in the comments below. I am ready for some summer festivities. All right, y'all, that's what I've got for you today. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I hope you're being kind to yourselves, and I hope you're finding some joy in your journey. Thanks so much, y'all. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.